And the last 24 hours has been full of analysis of what the Russian withdrawal from the port city of Kherson really means. Are Vladimir Putin's troops really on the brink of collapse, as some have reported? Or are they trying to turn Kherson into a city of death, mining everything they can as they pull back from the Dnipro River? Well, the Ukrainians say they've liberated over a dozen surrounding towns en route to Kherson, but they're still proceeding with caution, as Alexander Daniluk, Ukraine's former national security chief, informed me when I spoke to him before we came on air. Well, first of all, there are real game, uh, gains, right? We, we've taken seven, um, seven, seven pounds um, only today. So only judging by that, we are progressing. And we're taking more territory, retaking more of our territories. It's talking about the progress. But I would start with something more important. We do understand that Russia has no ability to uh, keep the right bank of, of Dnipro in Kherson uh, Oblast. And so Kherson, which is on the right bank, Russia is not able to defend in uh, mid-term, long-term, and actually also in, um, I would say, in short term as well. So um, that, uh, this is very important to understand this because their logistics of supplying ammunition is being disturbed now because of destroyed the bridges. And it's very difficult to, you know, to, uh, for them to keep a small contingent of around 20,000 um, uh, military personnel, uh, given that we have uh, a clear... Uh, advantage there, uh, both uh, no military advantage, um, but it's a very careful um, kind of situation now, very peculiar situation. Because while we're advancing, we want to keep our casualties to minimum, and so we know very well that Russia is mining the city. Russia is preparing some traps. Russia is. Uh, pretty much having the aim to destroy Kherson um, uh, before it being taken by our forces. But also, when we take it, they will have ability to shell it from the left bank. So, unfortunately, Kherson will have a very, you know, dark destiny, and Russia already committed to uh, in, inflict a very serious damages to, to the city. So this is unavoidable. We know this. And so all our plans to advance, you know, we're taking in consideration this uh, kind of, uh, not just risk, but this reality. And that's why we are very careful. But eventually we will retake it. But I could tell you that uh, taking your son is rather symbolic, right? It will not bring any strategic advantage, but it's very important symbolically to retake the only large city, the regional capital that was taken by Russia um, uh, since the beginning of the uh, new phase of the war in the beginning of the year. So how do you turn this symbolic victory, this symbolic advantage, into something more militarily significant? You know, when I say symbolic, is because, as I told you, it's, it's the largest... Um, you know, a, a large city, the only large city that was taken by, by Russians, right? Occupied by Russians. Actually, annexed by Russians, right? So, and we're now retaking it. That's why it's symbolic and it's important. Militarily, uh, why I'm saying the significance is, is lower because Russia will be able to, to shell the city and shell our position in Kherson uh, from the left bank. And obviously for us, it will be more difficult to move to the left bank because the bridges are destroyed and crossing the forest in the, the Dnipro River will cost us uh, you know, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people. So I would say taking Kherson is symbolic. Now it will be strategically important when we'll be able to cross the Dnipro River and move to the left bank. That, would, you know, that will be strategically important. And I see that one of your officials has posted a message saying that the Russian-occupied part of Mikolaev is now free of Russian soldiers. How significant is that? Yes, it is significant. Uh, while we're clearing, you know, Russia is uh, is clearly, um, you know, they, you know, stepping back. 
Why is it important? First of all, it's important because it boosts our morale, right? And it's uh, both military and also civilian population. It's also important because people who are under occupation being freed now. And that's saying, sending a signal to other regions between, in which were currently occupied by Russian forces that, you know, uh, that Ukraine will liberate them. And why Kherson and Nikolaev are important uh, that they are liberated is because there was a lot of resistance there. There was like a, you know, partisan movement, you know, with the civil, civilian uh, resistance there um, against Russian forces. And so uh, now this resistance also helped to liberate Kherson Oblast. And that's, again, some signal to other regions, for example, part of the Porozhye region, which has been occupied, that, you know, people should resist the occupation there, and that will weaken the Russian, and Russians ever will be able to liberate this uh, region as well. And how much are you hoping that the progress you've made around her son and Mikhailov will encourage those politicians and military leaders in Western capitals who may be getting tired of this, that they should stay with you? It is difficult. Yeah, I, of, of course, this is, this is a big uh, part of it. it I'm, I'm confident it will encourage even more support because the West wants to be part of this victory. You know, Ukrainian army is very strong now because our morale is strong, our motivation is strong, and we will, you know, we are, that's why we're defeating Russia, who, uh, who are quite demoralized at the moment. And so obviously West wants to be part of it because it's important to, to end this war. And, uh, you know, it looks like peace negotiations will be, any possible peace negotiations will be, just a delaying of the war, which is nobody is interested in. So the only way to end this war is to, to, is to support Ukraine, our military, to help us to end it sooner. And that's a thing West understand it, uh, understand it very, very well. We receive more ammunition from, from uh, Great Britain, right? We get more missiles from Great Britain. Every time we get some uh, significant progress, will get more support, more military, uh, military support. And that is, uh, I think it's, it's, it's also very, very important, right? Because otherwise, there would be more and more, uh, you know, messages coming from, uh, let's just uh, make a peace. And for Ukrainians, peace means uh, basically a long war that will eventually be like eating into our economy, killing our people, so we want, we want to win this war. And we're only ready for negotiations when uh, one condition is, and the one condition is when all our territory will be returned to us and compensation for the war will be repaid by our hands. And um, I know you're a former Ukrainian minister and you are co-founder of and head of the Center for National Resilience and Development and an officer in the army. We keep hearing that Russia's army is short of people, short of equipment. What about the position that you find yourself in now on the front line? I also can also say that I was a former national security chief for Ukraine. Yes, yes. In 2018. And so, and so um, okay, my position is the following, right? Although what is happening now is quite promising, but we do understand that... Um, Russia is short of people only because Putin is hesitant to mobilize more resources. If he wants to, he will be able to mobilize more resources, right? Um, so I believe on the next phase, Russia, when they go into deep defense, they will be able to free some of the resources because by, when they're defending, when they have like well defined positions, they need less resources to protect them against like uh, attacking Ukrainian army, and so they will free some of the resources that they will actually um, re um, reposition somewhere else, 
and that could be Donbass, that could be you know on, on, on north of, of of Ukraine, but clearly they will uh, they will um, start accumulating more resources, including by the way by additional mobilization, in order to uh, continue attacking Ukraine uh, from a different direction. So it's too early to say that you know the war is is over or any close to it. No, unfortunately. You know, the war is an active phase, and the fact that we are progressing now doesn't mean that Russia will not counterattack. So that's why we need the full support of the West. We are mobilized. We need the full support of the West, and that is the key to the victory. And that was Alexander Daniliuk, former National Security Advisor of Ukraine, former minister as well.